Hello! Today I'm going to be sharing about how I'm planning and prepping for doing Around the World with Picture Books Part 1 and 2. If you've been watching, you know that I am planning to use this as the spine for the literature and geography studies of our kindergarten year. I am really excited about doing this. Something you might not know is that my sisters actually are looking at what we're going to be doing and they want to be involved a little bit. So my sisters are actually also going to be involved in some of our geography studies this year. We're going to be doing some parts of it together, not necessarily in a four credit sense, but just because countries of the world, cultures of the world are interested, are interesting things to learn about. Um, so my sisters who are in high school and in upper elementary school will be joining in on this study. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a look inside this study, as well as talk about some of my plans for taking it to the next level. I'm not in the, not in the sense that there isn't enough included in the Beautiful Feet books um, guide, but more in the sense of there's just something about this topic, there's just something about this study that I guess it brings out the extra homeschool mom in me. It's something that makes me want to dive in a little deeper, not to totally go overboard. I'm never going to be the overboard super, super fun mom, but it makes me want to plan some extras. It makes me want to make this a little bit richer and a little bit deeper because some, because I think when you look at it, sometimes you're like, what? Two, two books for a country? That's hardly enough. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my plans of how I plan to enrich this, some of the specifics of what I plan to do. Um, so let's get started. All right, I'm going to begin by giving you a look inside the guides, um, just in case you haven't seen inside these before, and then I'll kind of use these to give me some structure for how I talk about the extras that I am planning. So I have both guides here. The first guide will take you through Asia, Australia, Antarctica, and Africa just a few countries from our big continents of Africa and Asia. They just choose a few countries. And then the second part goes through Europe and South America. And a few, again, a few countries from each of those continents. Now, uh, you can buy just the guide from Beautiful Feet Books if you have access to a really fantastic library. A lot of people do just that. Uh, I do not have access to a library that's likely to have any of these books. So I did not do that. I bought the books that go with it as well as buying some of the extra books. So Maps is a spine that is used throughout the entire course and another major element of the course is notebooking. So I got this very typical notebook from the US that we can use and it's because of the spiral binding we'll be able to glue in, paste in papers and drawings into here, but we do plan to implement the notebooking element. And then, so notebooking is an important thing. That's something you'll be doing throughout all the country studies. And they have a certain number of books that are basically mandatory for completing the study. The core books being used, which are just a few books per country. It's not a huge amount of books, 20-ish, 22 maybe books for each part of the study. But for a book lover, that might not sound like all that much. So feel free to add on more books. They give you book suggestions. You can also find more book suggestions from other sources that I will be talking about. So the, it, very, it starts right off with China. And um, they have these four books suggested to begin with, but you can add in many more. And we are adding in many more. The first add-in I want to talk about is actually a spine text that I'm adding in. I found this DK People and Places visual encyclopedia that I thought would be an excellent addition because it's something we'll be able to use for all the countries. So, so that's what's making it a spine. We're getting to learn about people from, and we'll be able to add this book in with every country that we're learning about. And there will be even more that we won't cover <laughs> with countries that we don't cover. So this is a second spine that I added besides maps so that we're not just focusing on the geography, but also on the people and the culture through this spine. I thought it would be very worthwhile. Then you have lessons, and it's not like a lesson grid where it tells you like, do this, read this, read this. 
in a very succinct way. They kind of have paragraphs. They explain to you what to do, what you're finding and looking for on the map, what you're looking for in Annos China, for example. They have a lot of pictures in the guide. So here are pictures that connect to the illustrations in Annos, Annos China. And you have your books, but then you also have suggested library books. So I do have several of these. I have those three. I think our library actually does have Lon Po Po. Um, so we will definitely be bringing in all of the extra books that we have, taking time to read those. And they go into some art related to the different countries, art or artists. They have more related books relevant usually to a biography and history section. So we have this book, The Great Wall of China, because that's a sunlight book. So we will definitely be doing that. Um, the Confucius book looks really interesting, but I don't have that. Marco Polo, they look interesting, but I don't have all of these. So we won't be able to do all the extra books. We also have art project connections. We can do Chinese painting, Chinese brush painting or calligraphy. Uh, and a nature connection where we get to go into animals that are native to China, as well as pretty much every country ends with a cuisine lesson where they invite you to make food from the unit. So I wanna talk a little bit about how I am approaching planning. And I will say I am approaching planning with basically one country at a time. I'm deciding about how many weeks do I think I'll need to spend on one country? And for me, I think we're gonna spend three weeks on China. Um, it, there's a lot in here and I do have quite a few of the extra books and I'm totally happy spending a good long time on China. It's, I used to live in China, I speak Mandarin Chinese so we can bring in some language learning. Um, uh, and we are actually also starting this early in the year so we technically have a little more than one school year to complete it. So I think we'll have plenty of time um, to take several weeks for some of these countries. So I'm planning on three weeks. First thing I do is I pull out all the books, both the books I bought to go along with this program, as well as any extra books that maybe my mom already had, any other books that connect to the country. So that's my second step. Okay, I know I'm gonna spend three weeks. Next, I'm gonna pull out and find all the books that I had. So for example, I didn't buy that Great Wall of China book, but I knew my mom had it because it was part of Sunlight. So we've got our whole nice, beautiful stack of books. Then I wanna plan, okay, so we've got our books, we've got our lessons in here, I can follow along with that, we'll read our books, but what extras do we want to do? And I'd like to have a rhythm of extras so that we, like, it takes less brain space once you have a rhythm, right? So if we can do some of the same extras every single time, that would be easier for me, it makes my life a little bit easier. So once I know how long I'm spending on the country and what books I have to work from, I can plan my extras. And I want to kind of try to hit the same categories of extras with different countries, mainly because that makes my job easier. So if I know I have one certain category of extra I like to add, it just makes the brain work less difficult for the next country when I know, oh, look for an extra that fits this category. Of course, things are going to change and shift a little bit with different countries just because they are so different. But so besides what's in the book, I've decided I'd like to one, look for some movies that connect to different countries. And the one tricky element of this is the fact that I have a kindergartner, so I have a young child. So I can think of some very, very good movies um, like The Road Home for the country of China. The Road Home is a classic of Chinese cinema. Excellent, highly recommend. I will, I do plan to show it to my sisters. It's not, it's not that it's like not clean. It's just that it would not be interesting to a five-year-old boy. Um, it's a movie for grown-ups. It's a um, romantic drama. It takes place in the past. It's a great story, a great film. And I think definitely one that is good for showing Chinese culture. But it's not a kids movie <laughs> um, so that is that I know will be one of the challenges with movies one thing of course we can always do that can kind of be a default is like nature documentaries so we can watch a nature documentary on pandas <laughs> um, for example and those types of films will be 
probably easier to find at the younger child level. But I am also open, so if you have any like really good quality favorite movies um, that connect to different countries around the world, definitely let me know in the comments because that's something I am going to be looking out for. I've watched a fair number of Chinese films, so that's one that I know more. Of course, when we go to Japan, a lot of my family watches quite a bit of anime, so I know that they will have their opinions on what um, anime movie I should show um, to my kids and some kid-friendly ones for that. So movies is one extra I want to do. I do want to incorporate food, which of course the guide already gives you recipe suggestions. I don't know that I will follow the recipes all the time. It can be kind of like for any type of ingredient that's not commonly found here, it can be really hard to get or very expensive. So we're just gonna have to wait and see how it goes with actually cooking recipes from here. But we can definitely be buying snacks, especially for Asian snacks. Those will be pretty easy to find and even Australian snacks tend to make their way here. So I just, uh, my, my sister just visited from China. So I actually asked her to bring us some Chinese snacks and maybe ones that we can't find locally. So she brought us some chicken feet. She brought us this, which is some type of beef. Maybe, maybe a kind of beef jerky type of snack. She brought us this. So I was pretty impressed um, with what she found. So it'll be some interesting snacks for all of the kids to try. I'd also like to incorporate a little bit of language exposure which I've studied both Mandarin and Japanese. So we will be able to, the first two countries at least, we'll be able to start strong <laughs> um, after that. It might get a little bit more challenging. I don't know any Thai at all. I have seen it, of course, on signs and all that. Um, always looks like a challenging and interesting language, but I just don't know any of it. Another element I'd love to bring in is bringing in some books for moms or for the teens to read. So for China, for example, I can have my sisters read Bronze and Sunflower, which is a book that's way over my boy's heads at this point, but a very beautiful book, one well worth reading and perfect for while studying China. Another extra that I am experimenting with for China, and we will see how long I can keep it up, is to create a little display relating to the country that we're learning about. So I'll show you mine right now. Um, I got most of these printables from Junto and Classicals on mission. They had an issue for China. They do have issues that line up with several of the countries that we are learning about. So um, there I can use their beautiful printables for some of these um, units but they don't have ones for all the countries. So I'm not quite sure of where I can find display items for all the countries yet. So stay tuned to see if I continue with this, this extra. I do really like how the China one turned out though. I'd also like to incorporate some very natural hands-on type of art activities, which some of that will be included in the guide and then some of it we can go a little bit further and then add on some of our own ideas. So for China, we will definitely be practicing with writing Chinese characters, both in the calligraphy style, but just in how do you normally write Chinese characters with a pencil or with a pen. So we'll be exploring that a little bit. Some of the countries seem to get a little bit more of a full treatment in these guides, probably because the resources are more accessible for some countries or just easier to find when you're trying to cover many, many countries. Um, but so I did notice that, especially I would say for South American countries and that it seems to be pretty slim, the resources that they have and maybe a little bit for African countries as well. Although they do have quite a few um, recommendations for the African country books, I did want to add in this as a spine and I do have Heritage Mom's Amazing Africa print, um, program. So I'll be able to use her book recommendations which this is one of her book recommendations, is Africa Amazing Africa. So this will be one of our spines when we're going over African countries. And um, I'll be able to use her unit that I have, Africa Amazing Africa, for some video suggestions and other book suggestions when we're going over African countries and to expand on what they have in this guide a little bit more. Then for South America, the book recommendations also felt a little bit slim and the information that they had here felt a little bit slim, but the good thing is we've been using Beautiful Mundo for our Spanish curriculum and actually a good number of Beautiful Mundo books are set in South America. Some of them are set in Central America, um, 
but there are some that are in South America. So I feel like we will just go and reread those and add those in. And I will also be looking a little bit more on what I could maybe add in once we start getting to the South America portion. I do feel like that tends to be a continent that it can be hard to find homeschool resources in. So if you have any good suggestions for South American countries like, let's see, um, Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, for those countries, let me know because I will be on the lookout. <laughs> um, they're quite far away from where we live here in Asia. So if you have any recommendations and suggestions, I would like to do a good job studying those countries. Several of those countries share a language with our family, the language of Spanish. So it'd be nice to be able to dive into them a little bit deeper. And I may also be adding a few countries onto this study. I would like to do a study of Mexico um, because that's where my husband's family is from, um, where he still has some of his extended family living there. Um, but of course, Mexico is not included in this because North America is not included in this study. But I think maybe I'll just extend it and we will DIY a unit on Mexico and we might add a few other interesting countries here and there. We'll see. This should be a fun year. I hope that you enjoyed this look into planning it. Just to give you an example of some of the richness of books that we're going to get to go into, I will show you all the books we are doing for our Japan study, which includes books from the guide as well as some extra ones. A Carp for Kimiko, Grandfather's Journey by Alan Say, awesome writer and illustrator. We also have The Bicycle Man. Then we have Manjiro. And Manjiro. Then a very old book here. I bought all of these books. If you guys remember, I bought um, the whole first section of Beautiful Feet books around the world from a homeschool mom who had purchased a lot of the extra books and then was selling Beautiful Feet books with a whole bunch of extra books all together in one package. So I got this whole package for a very, very good deal. Otherwise we would not have so many of the extra books. Little Pictures of Japan. This includes a lot of haikus in here. Um, then The Wave, which is related to tsunamis and earthquakes. Then Sumi's Prize. How My Parents Learned to Eat. Looks like it's about a cross-cultural cross couple here. The Samurai's Daughter. The Tale of the Mandarin Ducks, Crow Boy. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it interesting and helpful if you are considering Beautiful Feet books. Hope it gave you some ideas of extras and just a look at how I plan on implementing it. Again, I have not used this yet. Let me know in the comments if you'd like some updates as we continue to go through Beautiful Feet books in the next year or so of school. All right, I'll be seeing you, bye. Thank you.